My first encounter with um, the, the Van Dyke the Self Portrait was, it seemed so unlike any Van Dyke I'd thought I'd seen before. You feel his presence. And yet at the same time, there's a feeling also his remoteness and a kind of distance, a, a reserve. He's stretching backwards and upwards to look into the, into the, the mirror. And, and then you know that as soon as he returns to painting, he's going to disappear completely from sight. And I think it's that momentariness in that pose, that sort of stretch, that turn, that creates this feeling of the precarious presence and absence of the figure. I think there is a sadness that pervades this painting. It's clear that he was suffering from um, a terminal illness. Whether he was at the moment he painted this painting is, is not sure. But I think there is something in that. And I was really amazed when I went to the National Portrait Gallery and saw the um, infrared reflectograph in which you can see the layers through it. That there was this image of a rather more sickly and I think slightly anxious figure painted beneath. I think the other thing that I find so extraordinary about the painting is the way it seems divided in two, almost across the middle of the oval. The bottom part is rendered in very free strokes of paint, impasto strokes, indicating the, the active arm of his painting arm. It's looking over the shoulder this way. But the, the, the face has got that perfection, almost of a photographic image that you're aware that the body occupies one space and the head occupies another. It is a disjunctive, almost schizophrenic feeling about the whole thing. And in that way, I think he emphasises something about the nature of metamorphosis, the way the paint becomes face, persona, a transformation, which is what painting is all about and portraiture is all about. Turning does seem to imply metamorphosis as well. I wanted to look at that particular gesture. I, I wondered where it might have come from. And of course, the very earliest self-portrait of Van Dyck, the only other self-portrait of Van Dyck that was just a, a simple head and shoulders image is his very early self-portrait at the age of 14. There's a kind of feeling of vulnerability in it, a kind of curiosity at the beginning of his career, of one of kind of the confronting the unknown. In this, it's another kind of confrontation of the unknown, but it's one in which he's, he seems more self-possessed, but there's the equally the same vulnerable glance, and it's something to do with that occupation of this in-between space. And that's what I wanted to do with the exhibition which framed this work. I wanted to gather together works that had a similar quality for me, ones which brought out a feeling of, of metamorphosis and my ambition was to create a show in which I could link the act of physically turning with turning into metamorphosis. And I've focused on some of the mythic associations with turning. There's the Orpheus myth in which Orpheus is told, having been granted permission to enter the underworld and bring Eurydice out into the light of day, is told not to turn, but of course he's impatient, he does turns and he loses her a second time into the underworld and death and of course we're very lucky in Birmingham to have a massive collection of Burne Jones whose favorite theme is the Perseus myth which is full of metamorphosis Perseus would be turned to stone by directly looking at Medusa so he has to use the image the mirror the reflective shield as a way of defeating her and Burne Jones is a, a painter who is completely obsessed with metamorphoses. That's had a very personal meaning to me because I was brought up in Worcester near Birmingham. And I think I got the first shiver of the uncanny in looking at, at Burne Jones's work. I had been aware in my own work, particularly in the marriage series, that I was involved in producing images that involved a kind of metamorphosis. And I'd noticed also that um, when I did so, with perfect alignment, both of vantage point and impose of each of the figures, it somehow didn't work. It always seemed to need a kind of slight misalignment. But what I hadn't been aware of until I started looking at the Van Dyck and some of the other artists that I've included in the show, that this was also a kind of turning. And it seems like a very small discovery, but it's actually a rather significant one. 
I realized that by looking through a lot of my marriage series that I was actually creating the classic self-portrait pose. A number of critics and uh, visitors to my show made the suggestion that my marriage series are all self-portraits. And I've been always mystified by this, looking at these things and thinking, well, no, nothing I can see looks like at all like me. And then suddenly I realized, of course, it's not that they look like me, it's that they look like self-portraits. <laughs>